There's going to be a number of things, brethren, body of Christ. You who are born of God, Those of you who are not yet born of God, you prodigal children, you who have had enough of this world and have had enough of sin, you who are being called to the kingdom of God, you who have eyes to see, and ears to hear and a heart that understands. There will be things that we are going to discuss and talk about on this channel in the coming weeks and months that are of great importance. For it is the will of the Lord Jesus Christ that His people be without spot or wrinkle or any kind of blemish and that they be prepared and made ready for that which is to come. It is His will that His people be loyal to Him and to His kingdom. Above all, because this is right. Because it is right. And because God loves us. even said in the Old Testament that when, when man walks after other gods, when man walks after the fallen angel gods, when men walk after the lust of the flesh, they do so to their own hurt. And so the Lord wants to highlight some of the snares and the dangers, the things that lurk, the things that wait to ensnare us and trap us and catch us. And truly, that's what makes this age that we live in so perilous. This is what makes the Great Tribulation the Great Tribulation. You know, over the years, I've listened to a lot of other professing pastors and teachers and so-called prophets talk about and teach about the times that we're living in and the times that are to come and describe it as something that will be three times worse than the time of the Nazis in Germany. All the killings and the murderings, the atrocious evil things they did, that it will be three times worse than that time. And they're essentially describing this very crazy <laughs> world scene. They make it sound really, really, really scary. And you know, those things would be very scary. To be living in an environment like that globally, worldwide. I mean, whew. however, I'm going to challenge you a little bit at this moment and in the coming months, the coming weeks and months. What do the scriptures really teach and demonstrate about the reality of the end of the age? Because look, things are bad and things will get bad, but in what way?
We don't need to go painting different pictures and making things worse than they really are. We don't really need to add to anything. We just need to see what the Bible is telling us and discern properly the time we're in. Okay, for instance, what makes the Great Tribulation so great? It's multifaceted, just like the devil himself. How so? Well, we're going to need to talk about seduction and tyranny. You see, the devil has two main tactics, two main approaches to enslaving men and waging war against God and particularly his people. Against man and against the people of God, Satan uses seduction or tyranny, and at times, both. Now we read all throughout history, and it's evident that the world was extremely violent, extremely bloodthirsty. Uh, the human past, the human record is filled with terrible wars and violence. And so it is today as well. But you can also see instances of empires and governments and people groups that used ideologies, seductions to enslave people and to achieve their will. As you've heard this saying, that the pen is mightier than the sword. That's very true. Because sometimes the sword won't work on certain groups of people. Sometimes tyranny just can't break some types of individuals. Violence just sometimes can't break certain types of people. And the devil knows that. Hard times, times of great uh, resistance, lack of food, bad treatment, violence, removal of freedom. Sometimes that stuff doesn't work on certain groups of people. And so he's got to resort to another method. And that other method is seduction. It's introducing pleasures and freedom and philosophy to enslave man in the corruption of sin. And that's what I want to talk about. That the great tribulation that the Bible speaks about, let me tell you first of all, before I continue, all those who espouse that the great tribulation will suddenly begin and we will have this period of, this great period of seven years of tribulation and one day it's just going to start. They don't understand scripture. They've been lied to by false teachers, false pastors who have been lied to by the infiltration of the Jesuits into Bible colleges, seminaries, and local churches to deceive the people of God into believing things that are not true. This is a tactic of warfare. And so anyways, the Great Tribulation has been going on for a while. I know that's a very controversial statement. However, the Great 
tribulation? What makes tribulation so great? What makes this time that we live in like no other so perilous, so great, so different than any other time? Is that never before in the history of all the earth has the globe the earth, the inhabitants thereof, and all the systems, the governments that are in operation within the earth, never before has the entire globe been professing Christians like we see today. Entire Christian systems that falsely represent Jesus Christ, that falsely represent the gospel, that falsely represent God. I mean, do you know how many billions of people on the face of the earth profess to be Catholics, profess to be Protestant Christians? There's a lot. Do you know how many churches there are just in America alone? So the entire earth, in a general sense, is a vast network of false Christianity. And so never before has there been such a thing. And what makes this so perilous is because they all are a big, great misrepresentation of Jesus Christ and His words and His ways and His kingdom. And therefore it is a great deception because many people join this false antichrist system and this system seduces men into committing spiritual fornication, spiritual adultery, idolatry and living in a way that is contrary to God, contrary to Jesus Christ, contrary to his words, contrary to his ways. And thus, this thing is spread like gangrene all throughout the body of man on the earth. And so it is that here in the West, the primary tactic of Satan is seduction. He wants to seduce man and the people of God. Seduce them into becoming uh, lukewarm, apostate, having a false sense of security and peace. And he wants to use the cares of this life, the pleasures of this life, the pursuits of this system, riches and wealth and pleasure and entertainment and all the things that money can buy all the things that <laughs> can be offered to an individual he wants to use these and put these before the people so that they become enslaved by these things and so at times the tyranny the violence the meanness won't work on certain groups of people, so he resorts to seduction. And when the seduction doesn't work, eventually the tyranny will come. When the seduction doesn't work, eventually the tyranny will come. And in fact, the scriptures are filled with warnings to take heed and beware of false security, to take heed and beware uh, be make sure your heart is not overcharged or weighed down with the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, the lusts of other things. And so if you're committed to following Jesus Christ and you take his word seriously and you take up your cross and deny yourself and follow him daily 
and you abstain from fleshly lusts that war against the soul. And you do not want to be conformed to this world, but you want to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you want to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then let me ask you, what is the greatest form of tribulation for you? The greatest form of tribulation for you is to place all around you, on your right and your left, at the front of you and behind you, nothing but vanity and idolatry and pleasure and worldliness and worldly ideas, flaunting it all before you and placing around you individuals who love this stuff, who chase after this stuff, who are enslaved to this stuff. Why is it a danger for you? Because there's something inside of you that wants to go after it too. And it's called the flesh. It's called the carnal nature. It's called sin. And it's that part of you that you're called to crucify and put to death by the Spirit of God. And so it's very dangerous to be surrounded by such things. And therefore, it is great tribulation. And only those who endure to the end shall be saved. Only those who overcome will inherit all things. Now, I'm saying all that because you and I need to really realize what the scriptures are teaching about the end of the age in all of its fullness. Because we are literally getting ready to enter into a season of time where there will be great temptation, great temptation to allow yourself to be lulled to sleep by a false security, to become more earthly minded and worldly minded. Because things will seem like they've eased up. It will seem like evil has been pushed back a little bit. No, 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 no. This is part of Satan's plan. Seduction and tyranny. Seduction and tyranny. Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon. And it, it means literally secretive tyranny. Consider Potiphar's wife. Joseph was a slave in Egypt working for Potiphar. Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph into committing sexual immorality. But Joseph refused. He fled from it. He turned away from it. And he paid dearly for it, didn't he? So when the seduction doesn't work, then comes the tyranny. Then comes the injustice and the false accusations. Brethren, may you be faithful to Jesus Christ. Amen.